Hey guys, it's Crime, coach of the St. Louis Battle, Battle Hall Luchas, and unfortunately this is going to be a post-game uh, commentary. Uh, I was I recorded the week three match versus the uh, Bavarian Bravery, I believe. That's my, that was my opponent for week three, and uh, when I went to go edit the the audio, it turned out, and the video, I guess, it turned out that I my voice sounded like a uh, the robot, so the audio was messed up, and I that was my fault for not checking before starting by recording, but because of that, uh, now we have to do a post-recording. But uh, the good news is that I get to just click on the slider and move right through. We don't have to worry too much about idle time. So here we are at the... Uh, I'm just going to get right into it. So here is uh, the team that my opponent brought, Kuwabara brought, Whimsicott, Weezing Galar, Pyroswine, Duraldon, Magneton, and Regigigas. Um, Aside from the power swan, I expected everything. I'm not sure what the power swan is doing. This is something I really wasn't expecting. But uh, my plan here is to... Oh, say, hang on a second. Let me... We gotta turn this off because, as you can see, it's kind of bad. <laughs> but anyways. Let's see here. Nope. There we go. Anyway, so my plan here is to effectively take out the Reggie Gigas in one turn by leading the Ganadel and Bien Shell, and I'm going to like max Airstream or max Wormwind right into it and then go for a Life Orb close combat that should just take it out clean, don't have to worry about it for the rest of the game. Right? There we go. Yeah. I just took a long time to make my choice. There we go. And then I believe, what, did I, what else do I do here? I think I bring, bring Rotom for the hell of it. Yep. And then because I can't because I only have one spot left, there's no way I'm going to bring uh, Feeble, so I just decided to bring in DD, I believe. Yeah, because I don't mind it's not going to do very well here unless uh, I'm able to get a, get up a Trick Room. And I need in DD for that, so. We lead with this. Rotom here is really good because it can hit 5 of his Pokemon for super effective damage. Um, and then the other one is Weezing, which it, it could probably do a big chunk of damage too, so like, I told my opponent good luck, have fun, and as you can see here he leads with Whimsicott and Magneton, which I wasn't really expecting. I'm not sure what this Magneton at the time was supposed to do, so um, so in this position what I, I essentially have to do is just deny the Tailwind, so um, not even thinking twice about it, I'm just going to fake out the Whimsicott, and then I'm going to just Sludge Bomb, because there's, there's no reason to Dynamax yet, so we can just go for a raw sludge bomb, right? Yeah, I go for the sludge bomb. Uh, he goes for a protect, which is a really good move on his part, so he's able to guarantee the tailwind next turn. And I, I get nothing essentially out of this turn, because I just hit two Pokemon and two Amon that went for protect. And then what does he do with the Magneton? He goes for light screen. So I'm thinking that maybe he's just here to set up screens or whatever he has in the back. Uh, so I figure I just, I'm going to knock off... Since the Magneton is going to take a lot of damage from post combat anyway, I don't expect him to want to take it. I just decided to go for a knockoff to knock off the item. Um, so we can learn a bit more information. As you can see though, he did not go for the Tailwind. And that's going to matter later, I'll explain why. Um, but because of that, I'm able to knock him out with, without him retaliating and I get a speed boost. And I knock off his Evil Light, which is interesting. I thought maybe he would be Light Screen when I saw that he had Light Screen. When he had light screen, I thought maybe he was like clay, actually. Uh, so that made me wonder throughout this whole game, basically, what the Pyrus one is here for, and what is it that ten what is it here to do versus my team? But as you can see, he's got Reggie Gigas in the back, and which means that his last Pokemon is obviously Weezing, which he's going to go into right now. So um, that was interesting. So his plan is actually the Tailwind, so that this uh, this counter bring that I came up with doesn't really work out because he's faster than me uh, but it turns out that in that I asked him after the game like why he didn't go for Tailwind in game one it turns out he actually forgot to put Tailwind on his Whimsicott and that made a big deal because now that situation that he was trying to go for by making his Regigigas faster than mine again and would punish in this league completely and shutting it down uh, none of that's out of the picture and because this is the lead I designed to and for this situation, I'm act I'm able to essentially just do what I had planned to do, and 
and during this game, he I, I cut it out, but most of the turns after that turn two, he pr took almost all of his time, so he was definitely thrown off by the fact that he did not have Tailwind on his Whims guy, and it definitely affected his gameplay this whole first game. So here I'm able to go for the max Worm one. Right, and then because of the light screen, it actually does a little less damage than I want. In fact, it does half the damage I want. So, so when I actually go to, I lowered stack. That's pretty good. And when I go to this, do this close combat, he actually lives the hit. So, so it didn't actually work out for me anyway. So, it's able to keep him in the game for sure. But he goes for an max steel spike so that he can boost his defense. I suppose might as well get a boost out of it. Raises the defense, raises his Weezing's defense, and then I lose my Mancho, but that's alright. We've, we've weakened the Regigigas a lot. Oh, and then he goes for a uh, Sludge Wave, which is really confusing to me at the time. He even crit his own Regigigas, and uh, Regigigas did not go down there, so that, that was, I guess, a little lucky for him. Um, I, I think he went for Sludge Wave, though, because I have a Togekiss on my roster. And he wanted to get around follow me. So that, that makes sense. I, did, I just didn't bring the Togekiss, so it didn't work out for him. Now, interestingly here, because of the neutralizing gas, I'm not able to set my psychic drain. So I actually can go into the fake, in the Weezing with Fake Out. And then I can just knock out the Regigigas to get a plus one boost with Max Ooze. Since I'm uh, timid and I get a uh, speed boost. So I figure I just go for a special attack boost with the Max Ooze. Might, might as well. And the Regigigas goes down. Before I can even go for its second attack, so that's good on for me. And I still have one more turn of Dynamax to take advantage of as well, so that's really good for me. This game is definitely going in my favor. Yep, and then the Weezing punches. Neutralizing Glass still on the field, so I don't have my abilities active. And then he's got Magton as his last Pokemon, we've already seen it. And I already knocked off its item, so here I can just go for Expanding Force into the Weezing. Trains that up so I have to actually target the Weezing. And then, because I don't have any good way to hit these Pokemon, I just decided to go for Max Darkness into the Magatons and put more damage on it. And I can lower the Special Defense so I can do more damage with both my Pokemon on the following turn. It's a 2-8 code. That is pretty good. And that's because I knocked off the Eviolite for sure. Yep, I go for that. And then I go for Expanding Force and I find out that he's actually Pyapa Berry. So that was very good prep on his part. Uh, just making sure that he can survive one turn. But as you can see, it still does a lot. So, Excited Force would have done a lot had I actually had the train up and he didn't have that berry. He just goes for Flash Cannon. And because uh, Magdon's XM, you can actually sludge wave and not affect his own partner. As you can see here, he does a lot to my um, Indeedee, and he actually crits me and I survive because it's a spread move. And then the light screen that he set earlier is now gone. So everything's in my favor here. I can just go for the expanding force. And I just go into the Magneton and then I believe I Sludge Bomb into the Weezing. Yep. Yep. I go for the Sludge Bomb here. Weezing should faint. Yep. So Weezing faints, which means that neutralizing gas is on the field. So first we're going to get the Psychic Surge back up. And then I'm going to get a Beast Boost, I believe, from this. Which doesn't matter anymore, but it's nice to have. Yep. So I have two speed boost, and then because it's single target and I psychic drain, this uh, I didn't think this was not going to do much before, but now I'm able to knock out the magneton, and I'm able to take game one. So because he doesn't have tailwind on his whimsy guy, he has to play around this a little differently, but he could still probably utilize the uh, whimsy guy if he has other support moves to go for. But because he didn't lead the Regigigas Weezing combo, I actually decided to mix it up a little bit and go with my other mode here. So I go in DD and then I go, I believe, yeah, I just go Psychic Terrain combo. And then the idea what I, what I want to do it here is I want to set up the Trick Room for the Delmise. I have the Focus Sash so I can always live one hit. And I don't think he'll expect me to go for Trick Room when I'm going a fast route like Feeble. And then... Something, for something fast outside of Trick Room, I just decided to go with Mian Xiao, especially because of that fake out pressure that I have. Even if Trick Room is still up when I bring up Mian Xiao, I can still go for a hit uh, first, in the even in Trick Room. So game 2. I'm going to take a drink. Alright.
Yep, he leads to Rabadon on Whimsicott, which is, I, I think, a very fair and expected lead. Um, so here I'm expecting him to maybe Dynamax, then be and because I don't know yet that he doesn't have Tailwind, that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting, like, a Tailwind plus a Max Dragon or a Max Darkness or something like that so that he can, like, keep up with me. Because right now, Feeble is the fastest being able to feel with the Psychic Seed. So, he, yeah, here, here I just decided to go for the Trick Room. And I go for the Parting Shot onto the, the Duraldon since I expect it to Dynamax here. Yep. And then he goes for Light Screen. So, so that's very good on prep on his part to weaken my special attackers. But he doesn't uh, Dynamax either. So if I wanted to, I could have uh, went Faked here as an Expanding Force, but... Oh well, <laughs> it's not the play I made at the time. But now I'm able to go into my Delmise. I'm not worried about the the route, uh, because I have the Cold Ruberry so that I can take it a Max Darkness better. He, got, he does cover that Dark Pulse, but he actually goes into the Indeedy. So as long as I don't flinch here, I get the Trick Room up. And I don't flinch, so yep, I'm able to get up the Trick Room. And I believe here I'm able to... I have my terrain up so I can go for expanding force if I want. Do I, is that what I do? Yep, I just go for expanding force to DD. And then I don't think I feel a need yet to Dynamax. I also don't want to overwrite the terrain with Steel Roar. So I just decide to go for Poltergeist and see if I can learn anything more about this Duraldon. But he actually switches out the Duraldon. So I'm able to get some more information and some free damage. But he goes into the Magneton. We already know that this thing is Evil Light. Uh, so, go for that, and I believe, do some good damage to this thing. Yeah, like, just barely under 50%, and you can see here, Whimsicott actually moves before my Ndidi, so this is actually a really slow, bulky Whimsicott. But, regardless, I survived the hit, and I'm able to go for Expanding Force, and I do half the Whimsicott, a little more to, to Magneton as well. And then here I decide to just go for Expanding Force, and then I think I take it out here. Do I Dynamax? Probably could have waited on the Dynamax, if we're honest, but I don't. that's not what I did here. Go yep, go into the Whimsicott. I decided to just target the Whimsicott because it, it, I learned that it is actually moving before my Ndidi in the terrain, so I would like to, to remove it so it's not getting spread damage on my both my Pokemon. Dynamax the Anchor. So the goal of Delmise here is I need to, I can use Max Phantasm to lower defenses so I can hit harder artificially the next turn, but I also want to be able to get up the Grassy Terrain at some point because I have Grassy Glide as my grass move. So I want to be able, even outside of Trick Room, I want to be able to move first. So at some point I do have to click Glassy Grid, but it's going to be a little hard because the Magneton resists the grass move. He goes for a Volt Switch here and knock out my DD, that's completely fine. And he goes to Raladon, if you guys saw, and then I'm just going to go Feeble because outside of Trick Room, I don't have the Unburdened anymore, so it's not going to be nearly as useful. I can also Snarl the, the Raladon. As you can see here, he brings up the Palace Vine as well, so because we know, because I already know that Eevee Light is taken, so I'm still kind of like sold that this Palace Vine is here as a weakness policy Dynamax Pokemon, so I'm a little afraid here in this position to go for a max steel spike or a max grass into pile swan because I don't want him to protect and then get a weakness policy boost and dynamax the next turn. So here I go for the max phantasm into the Duraldon actually. Just to put a lot of damage on the board. I think can be pretty bulky too. Uh, he decides to dynamax here. So turns out that he actually dynamaxes the Duraldon. So I'm not i I'm still not sure what this power swan is here for. I thought maybe he would dynamax that if that was uh the if he brought it in the first place, but he does not. So I'm able to go for the Max Phantasm. We do, I think, a good chunk of damage, but not that much. Yeah, it's a pretty good KO. Or a special defense, which doesn't really matter for Feeble. It's just a support Pokemon designed to spread drops and stuff. A Cycle Crash actually does a lot of damage, so it tells me he's definitely offensive, for sure. Yeah, he goes for a Max Steel Spike into my Feeble. Because uh, we're especially bulky, we live this hit, for sure. And he's boosting his defense, so he just neutered the defense drops that I gave him earlier in the turn. And I go for Snarl, I actually missed the draw done, so that kind of sucks because that's the thing, that's the whole reason I'm clicking Snarl in the first place, but 
uh, it, it happens, so we're just gonna, I think we're just gonna do it again, right, yep, we're gonna go for a Snarl again, and then here I make a mistake, actually, I decided to go for the Max Steel Spike instead, right, yeah, I think I'm going between is like, oh, do I want to Max or, Max Grass or Max Steel, Max Steel is stronger than the Max Grass, but I, in reality, that was my last turn, Max, I should have gone for the Max Grass, but I actually go for the Max Steel Spike, uh, which the defense piece doesn't even help me in retrospect because of how much damage he was doing for Icicle Crash on the Pyrus one. But even for Protect, because he doesn't have the EV light, obviously, you can see it does a lot of damage. But it would it would have been much more beneficial for me had I set up the Grassy Terrain. And then he's going to go for the Max Steel Spike and knock out my Feeble. Totally fine. Yeah, defense boost to the power slide. That's going to help his power slide now take a hit from me about her. As well as his uh, Duraldon. Now, Trick Room is over and the terrain is gone. So, uh, yeah, here I go with Mian Shell. And then Mian Shell is, gives me a pretty good advantage here, at least. But, um, Dalmize, as far as its like usefulness here, is a, it's a little overshadowed because. Yancho can hit both of these super effects damage, and uh, Delmise is just a little too slow to get things done. So, I think here I just go for the close comment to the Drowdon, hoping that I can take it out so it does not uh, fire a max move into my Yancho, right? Yep. Yeah, Drowdon's a bigger threat because it's big. And then, be like, I'm, I'm forced to go for... I should have gone for Grassy Guide anyway, but I decided to go for Poltergeist to see if I could learn any more information about the Pyro Swine if I somehow survive here. But as you can see, he actually survives because of the defense boost he was able to get that last turn. So maybe Max Phantasm could have even been a better move that last turn, but two chances to make it right, and I didn't do it. But he's able to go for Max Roman here, and he's able to take out the Mian Shell one hit and lower the attack on the Delmise. So, and then he goes for Icicle Crash here, and he's just able to take out my Delmise before I even get a chance. Yep. And he, so he's able to take game two, and, yep. So I'm going to go into game three, and I'm thinking that he doesn't want to leave the Regigigas Weezing combo because I showed in game one that I'm prepared for it. And in game two, obviously he won with without them, so I, I decided to switch it up a little bit, I think, by, I still lead in DD, but... I leave. I um. I decide to bring the Ganadel instead on front because I can. I can sledge bomb some things. I can go for Max Dragon, and I just decide to leave, put Mianchi in the back for that fake out pressure. And I go Delmise just in case there's a situation where I might want to trick him and bring in the Delmise. Maybe I. Like I could execute the same plan as I did before, but maybe just play a little better. I still have Snarl on the um. Naganadel as well, so it's kind of like filling the same role here as um, Thievul, except it's an offensive Pokemon. As you can see here, he actually does lead the Regigigas Weezing Kama, so this puts me in a really bad spot because he gets the Dynamax, he gets to knock out something, and I I will not have a quick lay for either of these Pokemon. And so I decide here that what I actually need to do is I need to set Trick Room. Because if I set Trick Room, then I could get Delmise in, I could Dynamax, I can click Max Steel Spike, which will not only take out the Weezing pretty quickly, but I can also make it harder for his Regigigas to break through my team. And then, because I want to prioritize the, the Delmise, I decide to just Sludge Bomb the Weezing instead of Dynamax mine again, though. So he's going to Dynamax. So he'll be a, he's going gonna, gonna to be a turn ahead of me on Dynamaxing, so... I will have that advantage for myself um, in future turns. Let's see here. It should just be like a Max Strike or Max Darkness or something. I go for Sludge Bomb and the Weezing. As you can see here, it does, it does about 40%, 45, 40, something like that. So if I, if I double up on it the next turn, I can probably knock it out. I go, he goes for Max Darkness. He's able to bring me down to my Sash. So I'm just hoping that he doesn't attack here with the Weezing. Maybe go for a Taunt or something. Or may, well, we don't want to see we don't want to see taunt here either. Actually, we'll see. But yeah, he goes for a sludge blaze, so he is actually able to knock out my Indeedy. So I'm not able to get the trick room up, uh, which is a big bummer for the Delmise. But fortunately here, because I do have the Bien Shadow in the back, I can sort of go with the same strat that I had before to deal with this 
combo. So let's see here. Should just be a close combat to the Regigigas and a Max Wormwind. Oh yeah, I'm thinking about Max Air Stream too, but I think we have to Max Wormwind, right? Yeah. I think at the Max Wormwind because we saw last turn that with the light screen I wasn't able to do enough damage, so here I need to really assure that I'm maxing out my damage on a Regigigas to take it out here. I'm gonna skip through this. A little bit, yep. So I'm gonna Dynamax and I'm just gonna double target into this Regigigas to hopefully uh, get it gone and then I can steamroll for a steam, but he actually goes for a maxi guard here, so this is probably a really big turn for him to to take this game because I just doubled into him. So I think he's gonna be able to go for Obelisk essentially on my Bianchia, so I'm no longer able to take out the Regigigas the next turn. And in this position, I'm like, well, because I can't take out the Regigigas, I think maybe I should target into the Weezing. He's brought it twice so far in this set, and he's never showed me that he has protect or is willing to go for it. So I decide to actually, no, I don't. I decide, right? No. Trying to check, I think. Got a minus defense debuff. Let's see. Yeah, I think at this point I was debating on how to deal with this situation, yeah. But I decided to go for Poison Jack because it does the most damage to Weezing, and then I can Max Ooze as well. Uh, Max Ooze is the same power as Sludge Bomb, so it should take him to like 90% or something. But yeah, I go for the Max Ooze, and it actually turns out I get a crit here. Like, I'm able to knock out the Weezing, so that's really good. Because not only um, do I get my abilities back uh, right now, but I'm able to... Um, what am I able to do? <laughs> I get the beast boost. That's one thing. So I'll be faster than the Regigigas even if he max strikes. Right, I'm going to be faster anyway because he has slow start now. But I'm also able to get damage on the Regigigas. I think that's what I was trying to say. So he goes for the max strike here. Uh, it brings Nagano back to neutral. And I'm able to let the hit because of slow start. But even... Though he's lowering my speed here, it doesn't really matter because of so start. So now I can move first, and I don't have to worry about the Weezing. Or not the Weezing. I don't have to worry about the Regigigas, essentially, for the rest of the game. He goes into Pyoswine here. Uh, I'm still not sure why he is brought to Pyoswine, and I'm really, I'm really tempted to knock it off here and learn what he's trying to do with it. Right? I just... Like, I can close combat easily to do a lot of damage. I can still probably 2 a KO it, but I decided to go for a knockoff. Knock off, and I'm gonna go for a max Wormwin here, so I can lower the attack of the Regigigas even further. So it's just more of a more fodder for later. I can just s ignore it for the rest of the game. He goes for a protect, so that's pretty good. So, so my desperate attempt to learn what this Pyro Swine is, this whole set, I was never able to learn what the the Pyro Swine is here for, since I, I knew it's not an EVL like Pokemon for this match. But I have been able to lower the attacks at both of them, so that'll help me uh, essentially survive uh, a little longer with those two on the field. He goes for a knockoff of himself, actually. So he's going to knock off my life orb, so my already pathetic uh, damage output from the end show is going to be lowered even more. So, and now my Dynamax is over, right? So, on this turn, I know that Battle Swine can't protect itself, or at least... Probably will not be able to get off another protect, so I decided to sludge bomb into Regigigas so we can ex finish the match a little quicker. He goes for Ice Shard here, and because of that attack drop, I'm actually able to survive this hit. And I can go for Sludge Bomb. It's a 2 hit KO on the Regigigas. I don't get a poison. Yeah, I don't get a poison. And I'm able to cross combat. And even though I'm bird and I lost my life orb, I'm still able to knock out the Pilot Swan. That's really good for me. So, yep, we're never able to learn what he what he had. Could have been weakness policy, could have been... Or actually, no, we know it's not weakness policy, but... Uh, it could it could just be like an like a never melt ice or something, who knows. But he is able to knock out my Naganadel. He learns that I'm AV. And then I don't have any choice, I gotta go to Dumbass here. And then because of the... Because I have the Colberberry attack, so I'm not worried about the Regigigas at all. won't do any damage to my demise, even if it, I didn't have the Colberberry. So I think at this position, I decide to attack the Duraldon because it's the, the bigger fret here. Just checking to see that 
where the speed tiers lie. But yeah, I go for. Oh, I decided to actually take out the Weezing. Or the, the Regigigas, excuse me. And then I just pulled your guys to Duraldon. Might as well. Take it off the field. And I remember how much damage the Max Phantasm did before, so I'm like, oh, it's probably going to do a lot since he's not Dynamax. He goes for the Dark Pulse, and I reveal for the first time I have Cobra Berries, so... As you can see, it's probably... Uh, it might have been a KO. Pretty close. Uh, then I attack him with his own Assault Vest, so we learned he was Assault Vest this whole time. And you see, I do a lot of damage, actually. I actually crit... <laughs> the little insult to injury, I think, but there's no way you can win this at this point. Yep, and then I just go for a knockoff to knock off the item, just in case of anything random. And then I go for Grassy Glide because he's just so low. Even a quad resisted Grassy Glide will probably still get it if I somehow miss a knockoff. But yeah, I'm able to win the set. Uh, it was a really good game to my opponent and definitely one of my more enjoyable and close matches. And... You can see, even though he didn't have Tailwind on the Whimsicott, and it really threw him off a lot, he was still able to to bring it this close. So, definitely a very exciting game. So, but it, anyways, that concludes uh, this match. I'll see you guys for the next matchups. So, peace.